A few months ago, Nvidia launched their range of RTX graphics cards, but it's fair to say that the reception was rather lukewarm at best, with a lot of promises, but not much in the way of delivery. It was pretty simple, RTX was supposed to offer us a way to not only get higher frame rates, but use technologies like deep learning and parallel processing to play games in ways that just weren't possible on more traditional architectures. But it's only now that we're finally starting to see what these cards are capable of. So let's drill down into the real story about RTX. Looking at the cards strictly from a traditional performance standpoint, it hasn't really bathed them in the glowing green light that Nvidia really would have hoped of, as while each card is indeed mighty fast, it's only the 2080 Ti that actually offers a standout improvement versus the previous generation of Pascal GPUs. This would have been fine if the prices were going to stay the same, but they didn't, and the fastest gaming graphics card has become even more out of reach for most people. You therefore can't blame anyone for being upset about this, as the people that actively want to throw their money at Team Green suddenly don't have enough, and the allure of owning the best gaming graphics card has become just too hard to justify for most. The saving grace is this, RTX, a suite of features that are designed to give you the best possible gameplay and a whole host of brand new features never seen before in real-time video games. We are of course talking about real-time ray tracing and DLSS. Both of these were absent at launch, which sadly left our Tensor and RT cores just lying dormant on the Turing GPU. But as we head into 2019, we've got some proper titles that will support these technologies, and I've actually spent the last few weeks testing some of them out to really see what they're made of. Ray tracing hit the headlines as the standout feature, with the concept of mapping light rays in real time being almost unthinkable before 2018. But hold your horses, because while it sounds glamorous, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the best feature about RTX is not ray tracing. In my opinion, it's DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. Now I know that that might sound a little bit baffling, but hear me out for a second. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm playing games, generally speaking I will never trade quality for performance. If I'm on a 60Hz display, then I'm going to aim for a target of 60fps, but if I'm on a high refresh rate panel, I'll normally aim for around about 100. And this is exactly why I find eye candy like Nvidia's Physics and Hairworks just a bit of a bum deal, as it looks great, don't get me wrong, but you need a lot of GPU headroom to actually stop the game feeling worse as a result. You won't be surprised then to learn that I am over the moon that Nvidia have created deep learning super sampling, as this is a way to increase frame rates in 4K gaming, but without losing any visual quality. Now the way it works is both quite simple and rather complex, as each game is built its own profile, and this will run on the tensor cores that come baked into these RTX graphics cards. This profile is created and trained from supercomputers and some crazy high resolution game images, and it essentially upscales the image to a higher quality end result. What this means for you, the person playing the games, is quite simple. If you're playing at 4K, turn on DLSS and your frame rate will increase dramatically. This tech is rolling out to a fair few games in the coming months with PUBG being the most prominent on this list. Unfortunately, at the moment, the only real-world test is Final Fantasy XV, with the latest game driver enabling beta access to DLSS. Now, I was actually really surprised just how well this works, and the honest truth is that the processing technique actually results in an image that's more or less identical to MFAA, but with a gigantic boost of performance. You'd naturally be forgiven for thinking that these results are all wrong, as DLSS yields a higher performance value than without any anti-aliasing at all. But remember, DLSS is not an anti-aliasing technique. What's actually happening here is that your PC is rendering the game at a lower resolution and then using the tensor cores to upscale the image in post. This is why we're able to play at 4K, but without that crazy performance here. We'll be revisiting all of this in a later date when we've got more titles we can actually test and maybe even more resolutions. But for now, it's quite exciting stuff. But let's get back to ray tracing though, because since we last took a look at the tech, there's actually been a huge update that boosts performance across the board. I'll be honest, the numbers here still aren't fantastic, as at ultra settings we're losing a third of our performance across all of the RTX graphics cards. I am hopeful that we've got a lot more ground to gain, as the results actually haven't really scaled with the amount of RT cores on each GPU die, 
which maybe suggests that we might be able to get a little bit closer to the metal per se. Having said that, I stand by my statement at the start of this video. I am not prepared to give up performance for fancy reflections when it has a direct impact on the fluidity of my game. My numbers were ran at 75% of 4K resolution, and while you certainly can find the reflections rather pretty, an extra 30 frames a second are just a whole lot more useful for me. This all leaves us in a rather odd place, as the future of these RTX cards are actually quite dependent on the software that will come out. Will developers want to use RTX effects? Will DLSS actually take off? We don't really know. The good news at least is that we do finally know what these cards are actually capable of, with the mysteries behind RTX now firmly unlocked. If you're playing at 4K, then DLSS is going to be a massive game changer for you. And if you're happy to aim for 60 FPS, well, ray tracing might also become a real reality for you. Whether the asking price is fair for this package though, well, that's entirely up to you. If you are interested in current pricing, I'll leave my Amazon affiliate links down in the description below, but I really want to hear from you on this one. Is RTX worth it? Do you think DLSS and ray tracing makes all these extra features something that really is a must have? Or are you a little bit disappointed? I don't know, let me know your thoughts down below. If you have enjoyed this video and you get the chance, please hit the like button though, as it really helps out. You wouldn't believe with all this YouTube algorithmy stuff. So if you get the chance, it would be much appreciated. But a massive thank you to you guys for actually checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.